this episode of Let's Talk About Brand was initially broadcast as a live stream in 2020. It has been edited from its original format. Hey everyone, welcome to Let's Talk About Brand. I do this show every week where I bring on awesome guests to talk about specific elements of their personal branding journey. Today's is going to be really awesome and really unique. So this week's guest is Gary Ware. His company that he created is called Breakthrough Play. And yes, that is a very apt name because it is about creating personal and professional breakthroughs through the power of play. As adults, we often forget how to do that. And through uh, comedic improv training, Gary rediscovered that side of himself, rediscovered the power of it, and figured out, as a marketer, of course, we're always trying to figure out how we can apply that to something. Marketing is really creative application when you think about it. So Gary, very brilliantly, made that twist into creating Breakthrough Play, where he works with uh, corporations and teams and groups to uh, rediscover the power of play, not only to enhance their creativity, but also team building and also productivity. So we are gonna bring on the awesome Gary right now. Hey, Gary! What's happening? <laughs> so happy to have you here. So, um, so as I was saying, you bring the power of play uh, to companies and that's not a usual thing. Um, so first, the first thing I want to start out with right out of the gate, and we are going to get to your story of how you came to create this, but first I want to ask you sort of, since it's such a unique thing, what sort of hesitance do you tend to encounter sometimes when proposing this or sometimes even at the beginning of a session? Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing that I get is, Oh, play. Ugh. We got a lot going on. A it's a global up. pandemic. Yeah, we're <laughs> grown ups. We don't have time to play. And as a marketer, I put my marketer hat on and say, all right, I know this is powerful. I've seen it time and time again. How can I meet them where they are to help them? And so the biggest thing is that most companies are looking for unique and novel ways to help their employees uh, get better, um, help them connect. And LinkedIn, uh, every year they put out a, uh, like a, a ranking of the top skills that employees need to be successful. Creativity, the ability to be adaptable, um, uh, communication, all of those things are at the top. And the things that I bring to companies essentially solve for those challenges. So that's, that was my way of getting over those objections. Uh, however, when I describe what happens, people are still hesitant. You know, there's um, three people, uh, three types of people in my sessions, and my job is to bring them all together. So there's the person that, yeah, I love this. You know, they're they're hyped up. We we know who they are. It's yeah, all good. I'd be that person. <laughs> then there's the people that are like sort of on the fence. They're like, all right, uh, I don't know what this is, but you know, l let's see. They're they're a little open. And uh, then we got the these people. They have the arms crossed. Yes, they're the ones that are like, uh, I don't know about this. Um, but through my training in applied improvisation and my, um, training in communication, I developed this curriculum that allows people to slowly edge into it. And that's the beauty with play. If you think about when you were a kid and you would play, you would forget about time. Yeah. Time, it just, it's a blur. You would feel so present with whatever's going on. And then by the end of it, you're like, I want more. And so that is what I'm super excited to bring to companies. And so uh, hopefully that answered your question. I did one off. It did. It absolutely did. I love that. Um, so now we're going to back up a little bit. I had originally thought that you started out in theater and improv, then you got the grown up job, and then you figured out how to merge the two. But when we were talking before we went live, I discovered that you were actually a marketer first. So now I would love to hear kind of about that trajectory and how you uh, discovered the power of play and how it could apply to your own life and uh, creating this new unique thing. Yeah. So big question. Do you want me know, to break it down? <laughs> nah, it's all good. It's all good. I got it. I'm ready. I'm ready. You're, you're uh, an improver. Ready to drop you can roll down. with anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, so when I was, 
when I was young, uh, if you ask my parents, they would say I've been making stuff up since I was a kid. Um, but a number of you probably can relate to this of, hey, in order to be successful, you need to get a good job. You need to go to school, you know, all these sort of checklist things. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. Uh, originally, I wanted to be a music teacher. Uh, I played music um, through middle school, through high school. And then when I started to explore that as a career option, someone said, well, you know, they're canceling arts programs. You probably won't get to teach music oh. like you want to. You probably have to teach another subject. And so then I was at this crossroads where I was like, well, I need to make money because, right, that's how we get yeah. happiness, right? We, ha we have to do all these things. Well, that's also and how we, so you know, other eat. Things. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. That's how we survive. All of those things. And, and I didn't want to do something that I really didn't, like, I wasn't interested in. Um, and so I was sort of looking at, well, what do I do? And at the time, I was exploring web design. Um, I had a GeoCities website, if anyone uh, remembers that way back in the day. Oh, did you uh, have the very embarrassing. <laughs> yep. I had, I had all the, like, the, the embarrassing gifts, like the dancing baby and stuff like that. Under construction, um, little digger guy. <laughs> Exactly. All of those things. And so then I said, well, maybe there's something there. And fortunate for me, um, uh, I got accepted to the Art Institute in Los Angeles and I started exploring uh, multimedia web design. And along that, you learn all kinds of different things. You learn graphic design, you learn web. But then I read a book that got me excited about marketing. It was Seth Godin's book, Purple Cow, if anyone is a fan of Seth Godin. And that's where I was like, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to be a marketer. And so fast forward 14 years, I'm at this digital marketing agency. I'm a director. I feel completely in over my head. I don't know how I got there. Um, and this is typically what happens. You're really good at your job. And then people said, you should manage people. Yeah. I'm like, oh, like it's okay. related. And right. Yeah, exactly. And so I felt like a fraud, like, what, what do I do? And so I was always, and that's one of the things that I'm learning is that sometimes you need that anxiety of like, oh, you know, I, I'm in over my head. I'm an imposter to, you know, snap you into action. And that's where I started exploring. How can I get better? Um, I don't want people to find out. I don't know what I'm doing as a manager. How can I get better? So I would take any class that I could. And a mentor of mine, I feel like this is like Star Wars or something like that. Like I'm like Luke and yes. I'm like, like I have big dreams. And then like this mentor shows up and he was like, Hey Gary, have you considered an improv class? And I was like, what? I hated Toastmasters. Uh, mm -hmm. I felt so anxious going to Toastmasters. I'm like, why would I want to do improv? And he said, I, I trust me. I think, I think you would really enjoy it. And so I took a class. It was, it changed my life. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a Monday evening class. Almost didn't go because I was nervous. Yeah. Uh, about like, what are people going to think? Uh, but for again, for two hours, I was completely present. I was playing these silly games with like fifteen other people that I didn't even know, and we connected. And I immediately saw the connection between those games and what I was learning to prepare me to be able to think on my feet on the stage, to be able to connect with other people. I saw that connection with the work that I was doing. So that was that was the catalyst. And I brought it to my teams. Um, anyone that I work with, I was like, hey, we're going to play these improv games. And I became known as the improv guy. Like at conferences, mm -hmm. they're like, hey, do you mind running an improv workshop? And then I, you know, just because, you know what they say, like, hey, if you can find something that you would do for free, like, you know, that's the way to go. So I was just doing like meetup events. Like I called it recess. And I was just doing it for free just because it brought me joy. Um, but I was learning about the power of improv, the power of play, and I was always applying it to my team. And uh, fast forward, I'm running my own digital marketing agency with a few business partners. And then um, it came to an end. Um, business partner, you know, said, hey, I think we should go our separate ways out of the blue. And like, it caught me off guard. And then I was like, what do I do? Uh, and you had you not, to like, improvise something. You know, I had to improvise on the spot, like on the spot. I like, I had to like soul search, but guess what? It gets worse. So two hours after that conversation where my business partner 
uh, basically handed me and like my buyout check and was like, Hey, I think we should go our separate ways. Uh Um, You know, I thought he wanted to like sort of get out of this too, you know, get out of the agency business too. I found out um, months later that he was trying to sell the business and, and maybe he just wanted to get all the money for himself, whatever it is, what it is. But two hours after that call, I got a, call from my landlord uh, me and my wife and at the time my one-year-old son was renting this house and our landlord said hey i'm um, gonna have to sell the house <laughs> sorry oh, you're gonna have to move man. my you wife's got a lot working, of punches uh, at once to roll with right uh and talk about being adaptive and so uh, fortunate, like I had the support of my wife and my family, uh, my, my immediately family, immediate family, we moved in with my parents. And I was like, well, what do I do? I, I like felt deflated. Like, again, I got to the top of the mountain, I put the flag at the top of the mountain, I did all the things I had you all the check marks. It. You got the medal. You mm, yeah. <laughs> yes. And then what now? And, and then uh, so my wife uh, was saying, well, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of really good stuff with, um, you know, this improv and, and play, um, you know, double down on it. Like this is this is your chance. Um, and so that is how uh, Breakthrough Play really started taking off. And then I started going to companies and and I like to say I was a drug dealer of play because, like I said in the <laughs> beginning, um, people were like uh, play. And I was like, hey, let me give you a complimentary recess. Forty five minutes on me. If you and your team enjoy it and you get a lot of value out of it and you see if it increases your productivity and, and connection and stuff like that, if you see a chance for us to work together, I would love to to do that. And that that hustling <laughs> is what got this off the ground. I love it. All right. So <clears throat> here's the thing. It's one thing for the people in your life to know that you're an awesome marketer, you're an awesome corporate leader and you um, have seen the power play in your life. It's another thing entirely to sell it to completely other people. Like, who is this guy? What credentials does he have? What is he gonna teach me? And why should I pay him for it? So how did you sort of, the fact that you were a marketer probably helped, but how did you craft that offer and that brand and that credibility in a way that people actually uh, let you in to help them? Yes. So uh, a few things. One, like I said earlier, um, in improv, we have this saying, show, don't tell. You know, we're we're storytellers. We have no props whatsoever. So we have to, um, we have to really bring everything. So what I did is I said, hey, let me show you what it's like. Let, because it's hard to fathom where people are thinking, all right, so we're going to play these activities and then we're magically going to be better communicators and more creative. Like that makes no sense. And I said, well, you're right. Like that sounds silly. Let me let let's demo it. Let's experience it. Love that. And because I really started understanding the science behind it. Like, why does this work? Because I knew it worked for me. And I was like wondering, like, is this gonna work for everyone? And so I started learning about the neuroscience of how uh how we connect. What are the uh neurochemicals that go through our brain when we have these sessions? And so I was all about like demo, demo, demo. And then people like was like, wow, this was amazing. The other thing is, you're right, as a marketer, it really helped me be able to craft that story because um, a mutual friend of ours, Stephanie Liu, she always says, uh, data tells, but story sells. Mm -hmm. And by me sharing my story and allowing myself to be vulnerable about how I was burnt out. Uh, I was in a career where I thought I was doing all the right things, but yet I, you know, wasn't feeling like I was giving it my all. I was sort of phoning it in and to take an improv class and to play these games and then feel like I had more energy and I didn't do anything different other than make space for this. People started to connect. That was the other thing. Storytelling was a big thing. The other thing is, like I said at the beginning, is meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. Understanding where are they coming from? Because In improv, we have this uh, tenet of make your partner look amazing. Yes. And so at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about you. And how can I make you look amazing? So if I'm talking to a leader who is looking to bring something to their team, I tell them, look, I'm just a facilitator. I want them after the event to come to you and say, this was so amazing. Thank you so much for bringing this person into our lives. So that is my thing. And the other thing that I learned uh, since we're talking about branding is 
I, like I said in the beginning, I felt like I was wearing different hats. I was wearing the work mm -hmm. hat and I was wearing the non-work hat. Yeah. I learned that people connect with people. And how can I bring my idiosyncrasies and all that stuff into my message? And that's what I really learned through improv is it's interesting because on, with improv, we are making things up. We are acting. But the real thing is we're learning how to just be more of ourselves. Yes. I love that. That is so perfect. I want to back up a little bit about uh, and find out a little bit about how you conceptualize who to initially even approach with this how did you come up with your ICA for this especially being kind of a new unique thing that didn't have a predetermined mm -hmm. pattern and then follow-up question has it changed over the years yes oh you're such an amazing interviewer by Thanks. the way just FYI <laughs> th this is this is this is this is like legit like I, I, I love I'm all making so, you look amazing Gary <laughs> I, hey uh so it I started with what I knew. I came from a marketing background. Um, so I originally approach marketers because I can speak to their pain. Yes. I know that they are busting their butts for their clients, that they are working like long hours, uh, that a lot of times, you know, they are um, using that uh, sort of overwork as a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the thing I can speak to my own experience and how it helped me. I, and that's something about that authenticity about saying, look, I know what you're probably thinking. This is kind of weird. I thought so too. This is exactly what we did and exactly, you know, what happened to me. And the other thing is because I come from a corporate background, I can speak to the results that they're looking for. Yeah. I was a, a director. I managed over 30 people. So I know it's all about how do you have that juggle of keeping a culture where people feel engaged, where your top talent is being challenged and they're not on LinkedIn looking for another job. Um, and also getting those business results, because at the end of the day, if you're not driving uh, the business results, you can't pay these people. So I was able to speak to that and craft um trainings that were going to solve very mission critical challenges. So that was the original thing. Then over time, I got people that came to me. So I was niching down marketers, 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 because that's what I knew. Mm -hmm. Then I would go and do this at events and people will say, well, my team's not a marketer. You know, they're not marketers. You know, they're engineers. Would that work for engineers? I'm like, yeah, work for engineers. And so over time, that, uh, that client profile did change. And now, yes, I still, I love it marketers. It sounds like it expanded. Um, and yeah, right? The world expanded, but I had to start small so that I could speak specifically to them. And then over time, um, I started to learn from other people. What are your challenges? Um, one of the things that improv has taught me that I want to employ everyone to dig into is a sense of curiosity. I feel like when we're kids, we have it. If anyone's around kids or have kids, you know kids are curious. Uh, so curious that you probably get frustrated. Like, why, 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 why? <laughs> I'm surprised my daughter's not in here being curious right now. <laughs> right? I hear my son in the other room. Uh, I'm like, okay, all right. Oh, we're good for now. Um, but we get older and we that curiosity turns into cynicalness. And wonder turns into worry. And then we are... Like, especially if you're trying to, um, you know, have your unique, authentic brand, you are going to not push yourself. You're not going to take risk because you're like, well, how do I play it safe? Because uh, I, I got to make things work. And so for me, I just started being curious. And the interesting thing is instead of me trying to show off, I focused on being interested and what other people had to say. And that turned me into um, reaching out to people that are in talent and development because they were trying to bring curriculum to their teams. Yeah. And then I started asking them, what are your challenges? So, yeah. I love that. Oh, that's, that's so key. Being interested more than interesting. That is absolutely what it's all about. And Amy points out, wonder turns into worry is so spot on. Another challenge is that as we get older and we're professional, 
we feel like everything needs a clear end goal. Everything needs a clear point. And exploration and curiosity is about going in with an open mind, just like improv. It doesn't have a script. <laughs> it doesn't. And that's doesn't terrifying for people. Um, so well, we need certainty. That's the thing, which makes no sense whatsoever, but no, I get it. Not at all. <laughs> so uh, we have a question from Dina. She wants to know, can he tell us more about techniques for unlocking creativity? Yeah. Oh, my. Uh, so <laughs> that's my gem. Creativity is one of those things where when I was younger, I didn't think I was that creative. And there's a study done by NASA where they followed um, a cohort from kindergarten all the way through high school. And they put them through this battery of tests that was used to measure their level of um, creativity. And they found that kindergartners, 95% of those kindergartners had genius levels of creativity. I mean, genius levels of creativity. However, by the time they were 18, only 3% Oof. of that group had genius levels of creativity. What happened? And I could relate to that. And so what happened is you go through things like puberty, uh, you know, you have insecurities, you see someone that has uh, an innate talent and you're like, well, they're good at that. I'm not, so I'm not creative. That was the thing with me. Uh, there was a, a, a gentleman, his name is Mark Lomahan. If you're watching Mark, hey, what's up? Uh, I knew him in middle school. Um, dude was amazing at art, super artistic. And I was like, well, he, he obviously can draw. I can't draw. That was like my story, my internal dialogue. I can't draw. Yeah. I can't draw, which turns to into I'm not creative, right? I can't. And that is that the interesting thing is um, the voice that is closest to you is the one that you're going to believe. And that's usually the voice inside of your head. And so as far as creativity, I was, I wanted to be creative. Again, I'm a marketer. Um, and so I would read everything and I learned that creativity is just a muscle. So if you want to be more creative, that's where the play comes in. Because think about when you're playing a game. And for me, I loved uh, playing video games. I, I was a latchkey kid in the, in the 80s and 90s. So I had my uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, all that stuff. Um, I played time. some sports and stuff too. Right? And just play just for the sake of playing. But when you run into a challenge, whatever you're doing, whatever game that you're playing, you don't just throw in the towel. You get adaptive. You start to get creative. And so it's a muscle. It's a muscle that you can cultivate. And so my invite to all of you, if you want to get creative, you just need to go to the gym. Uh, not the gym for your abs, the gym for your brain. And what you, what I advise you to do is set aside some intentional time every day and work out your brain. So what you can do, um, I got this from the book um, by... Um, his name is escaping me. It'll come back to me in just a moment. Uh, but it's called, uh, oh, James Altucher is the book called Choose Yourself. Uh, yes, this is I something that right I do. Boom. Uh, and he talks about uh, every day giving yourself a prompt and um, answering the prompt. It can be as simple as, you know, you have three minutes to um, uh, write down 10 things that could change the world. Again, you know, yeah, that's a big thing. And again, we're just getting our brain to think abstractly. Um, something that I love to do is a thing called droodles. You can Google it. It's these weird, um, it's these weird images that show up on the screen. And, uh, Christine, if you don't mind putting me in just mine, I'll show you what it looks yes. like, but this is a droodle. Uh, a droodle is just uh, a weird abstract image. And you look at it and you're like, oh, that could be drunk ants going through the sand, or it could be <laughs> wavy hair. It doesn't matter. But the whole point is to let go of that inhibition. And so if you want to be creative, you have to realize that there are two personalities um, that are taking place. There is the clown, and then there's the editor. As adults, we try to clown and edit at the same time. That's not going to make you creative. You have to allow yourself to be silly. You have to allow yourself to think whatever whatever you want. And that takes practice. So if you want to get creative, it's all about being intentional. It's all about working. And what happens, you're doing it in a low stakes environment, your brain, you're building new synapses in your brain. Now, when the pressure's on and you have to be creative, you're going to be more likely to be creative. I love that. And it is a muscle and it is a, a skill you have to, to strengthen and develop. I want to show you something that I've been wanting to show you since the beginning. I just had to get up and get it. 
which is you mentioned <laughs> Seth Godin, <laughs> and I have an actual action figure of marketer Seth Godin. Um, it comes with a free marketing secrets booklet, though uh, the secrets will remain a secret because I'm not opening this. Um, he's got mismatched socks. It's just fantastic. So I had to show you <laughs> that I get we to play. We are from the same cloth. Yes, I get to I play with I have the same Seth one. Godin. You have it? I have it. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> All and right, he autographed so it. You know how geeky I am? I I had him autograph my Seth Godin. I should have done that. He lives right near me, though, so hopefully I can get the opportunity again. <laughs> I got it when I was in New York. I was in New York visiting, and I was yeah, in a weird in store, and I happened to see it. So, yeah. I love that. I want to um, ask you just one final question. I know we're coming up on the half hour here, but... I wanted to ask you a question from our Twitter chat, which is Kevin wants to know what the most fun you've had on the job this year is. This year. Woo. This okay. year's been interesting, <laughs> but right? you still found fun. I'm um, sure. I did. I did. And that, so in order for me to, to be able to like find that fun, I had to be open to something different uh, because I don't know about you, but um, on my 2020 plan, it wasn't survive a global pandemic. Uh, <laughs> that just wasn't part of the game plan. And so um, I transitioned to virtual and I started doing virtual workshops. And one of my clients is um, AARP. And they hired me to do a number of creative workshops for their volunteers. And it was a one of my signature workshops where um, I take you through different ways of being creative and it's very interactive. And we had so much fun. The people like they went all out. And this is the interesting thing. I love what I do. When I get into a workshop and I get on, like I leave feeling energized. Um, and if the people who are there also brings the energy it like feels like a party and that was like so much fun just to see their faces especially because a lot of them um aren't able to go out just because they're immu uh, immune compromised yeah. so they are um they are isolated um you know they're not able to see family um you know like they had in the past and to have an hour where we're not thinking about you know what's going on in the world to connect with each other to play in a meaningful way um it was very it was very special and it, it was like oh man i i remember that just like it was yesterday i love that and i love that this year was able to give you something that beautiful so thank you yes. so much for bringing your brilliance and your energy to us today gary we have uh some links in the comments but tell us again where can and where should people find you well if you're watching this live uh hey uh <laughs> You could you could add me on Facebook. Uh, I'm on all the socials at Gary Ware. Uh, Breakthrough plays my website. Um, yeah, I I love chatting with people, especially if you're interested in creativity, uh, productivity, uh, like um, curiosity, all that stuff. Hit me up. Um, I'd love to geek out with you and and uh, help you out. I love that so much. Thank you so much to Gary Ware of Breakthrough Play. Again, I'm Christine Gritman, and I do this every Friday at 12 noon Eastern time on Facebook Live. I just want to say happy birthday to Omar, by the way. It's his birthday, so happy birthday to you. Um, I, uh, I, In addition to this uh, Friday live stream, I also have a Tuesday Twitter chat that is on the same topic as my Friday live stream with the guest is going to be. So next week, our chat is about bringing your brand value to an employer. A lot of times we think about personal branding in terms of um, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, uh, people like me who are consultants. And that's not always the case. Sometimes a, a strong personal brand can really be a benefit to the company you work for. And a perfect example of that is going to be on next Friday, Matthew Kobach. Um, a, lot of, a lot of us follow him on Twitter. He has a squillion followers on Twitter. And he was able to move those followers to become sort of a built-in fan base for the startup he now works for, which is fast. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much to Gary Ware especially. And I hope to see you all next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk About Brand, part of the Adweek Podcast Network and Acast Creator Network. 
This podcast was produced by Christine Gritman, executive produced by Al Manorino and John Heil, and edited by Christine Gritman. You can listen and subscribe to all of Adweek's podcasts by visiting adweek.com slash podcasts. Stay updated on all things Adweek Podcast Network by following us on Twitter at Adweek Podcasts. And if you have a question or suggestion for the show, send us an email at podcast at adweek.com.